That's an interesting question. I've never thought about that at all. We always, when we, when we think of astronomy, we often think of stars and the, and the night sky being full of stars. And everyone knows that the sun is just another one of these stars. When you look at the night sky full of stars, do you think of them as suns or do you, do you put the sun in a different category? No, I definitely think of them as suns. And I'll, I'll tell you a, a good way to think of that. Um, there's a cluster in Cancer, the crab, which is called M67. And that's one of the oldest clusters we know. In fact, it's the oldest cluster in the Messier catalogue. And it's thought to be about four billion years old, that cluster. So that means all the stars that formed in it formed about the same sort of time that the sun formed. And it's known that there are 100 members of that cluster, at least, which are very sun-like. And so we can study those and we can get an, an idea of how the sun works. But amazingly, 30% of those suns, very like our own sun, are showing enhanced activity way beyond what our own sun is showing. So. Yeah, you can definitely feel that that is a star like all the other stars out there. And you can definitely also get a feeling for the fact that even though it's pretty stable for us at the moment, we like to go outside and sunbathe and whatever, it doesn't always behave quite as we would expect it to behave. So we've got to treat it with a bit of respect, I think, the sun. When you say these, these other guys are having enhanced activity that we can even monitor all the way from here on Earth, does that mean if our sun decided to have one of these little spells of enhanced activity, we'd be in trouble. Um, I think we could have interesting times, yeah. I think, um, I mean, the average activity of the sun is, is pretty good for our existence here on Earth, but it doesn't take an awful lot of change in output to alter that situation. I don't want to be alarmist, but I mean, you can get, for example, um, there was the famous Carrington white light flare that was um, observed in white light. We're looking at special hydrogen alpha wavelengths here with this filter on, so flares are fairly easy to see. But when you look at the sun through a white light filter, flares are not very commonly seen. On this occasion, one was spotted in white light, and um, we had a massive auroral displays following that. So there's a huge outpouring of particles that can come down to the Earth and kick off these amazing natural light displays. But also, they can interfere with electronics, they can cause um, weld joints in huge pipelines to become corroded, they can um, induce currents and blow out wires, transmissions, power lines, etc. And of course we're very reliant on the fact that we've got um, communications, we've got GPS satellites, we've got everything is basically electronics. So I think it's, it's something which we shouldn't be complacent about. On an astronomical level, is the Sun special? Is it a special star? I think the simplest way to answer that is no, um, because it's a really very average star. It's not, very, not particularly large, not particularly small, not particularly hot, not particularly cool. It really is a very average body out there. When you look out and you see um, some of the amazing other stars which are, are out there, you realise that I don't know, it's probably a good thing we've got an average star, not too energetic, not giving us too much grief here on our planet. But on some other worlds, um, the activity is quite dangerous, not conducive to life. And there was a, a good example recently of um, an observation of a planet which had been vaporised by a flare from its parent star. That wouldn't do us an awful lot of good if we had a super flare that that took us out as well. So, um, no, it's not particularly special at all. Obviously, you don't want to live near that star that's going to vaporise into the super flare, but do you ever wish you had a, uh, a better star to sit here and point your telescope at each day? That's an interesting question. I've never thought about that at all. Um, sometimes the answer to that would be yes. Um, and the reason for saying that is that this, these filters are quite expensive filters to buy and uh, they used to be horrendously um, expensive. I used one of these when I was at the University of Leicester and it used to be brought out like the crown jewels and you used to take it out and put it very carefully into place. Um, but they've become more affordable of late and lots and lots of people have got into buying them on the premise that solar observing hydrogen alpha solar observing is an amazing thing to experience and it is but we're coming up to solar maximum now so we should be experiencing lots and lots of sunspots huge sunspots huge prominences loads of flares and the sun has been pretty quiet really so 
sometimes you just want to go up there and give it a bit of a kick and say, go on, give us something really exciting to look at now. You're able to see the sun on my computer screen. Now this is, looks rather like a Heath Robinson arrangement here, and it is. This is basically a computer desk and I've got a framework built onto the top of it and this tarpaulin over the top of that. So that means that if I pull the tarpaulin over and they've got a laptop inside, if you can see that, but it's, also, it's gone nice and dark inside now 